Remember when? All of those years ago, everyone decided that Diane Abbott was somebody who shouldn't be in politics because she got some sums wrong one time in one interview. Do you know how this standard is going to have never applied to other members of our political class, especially when they're from the right? And how there's an entire double standard when it comes from the left and comes from the right? Well, somebody who is very much in the mould of being very gaff prone from the Conservative Party isn't the position that Diane Abbott had, which was just the Shadow Home Secretary, but is indeed the Chief Secretary of the Treasury. And this is Laura Trott. We've covered her plenty of times on this channel. One time was when she was on BBC Politics Live, getting skewered about the fact that she essentially lied about the tax burden coming down because of the national insurance cut, when actually the overall tax burden was increasing because of fiscal drag. She got skewered by that by the Politics Live crew. And also previously, in a debate with Nick Robinson, she just straight up didn't know the government's figures and had to be corrected on the government's figures live on air. And Nick Robinson even did her the due grace to say, well, maybe I've got mine wrong, even though his figures were right and she didn't have a clue what she was talking about. So she is somebody who's done this like multiple times, just being called out directly over her failure to understand what her role is, like literally she's Chief Secretary of the Treasury and she barely understands the numbers that she she's supposed to repeat. You're supposed to get brief this stuff before you go out and have the numbers to hand and know the rhetoric, know the things you're going to say. But she strikes again. She has struck again right this morning on Good Morning Britain when she has discussed the subject of inflation figures coming down, the headline figure of inflation come down, that is CPI. Let's have a listen to her on Good Morning Britain this morning great news for people at home. We saw inflation coming down. Crucially, we saw food prices coming down. And this hasn't happened by accident. This has been a result of the government working very hard with the bank, with the Monetary Policy Committee, to make sure we've got these uh, inflation rates coming down steadily now. Uh, real wages are now rising and people can have a little bit more money at the end of the month. And that's really good news. Just to be... To be it is worth pointing out, wages are rising in real terms now but they're not anywhere near where they were in terms of purchasing power in real terms than the start of the problem. The start of the financial problems that this country was under, wages are still not back to where they used to be. They may be rising in real terms now, but we're still behind where we would be because inflation has been rising and has been steady high for like two years. There needs to be pay rises in real terms for a very, very long time after this to get us back to the purchasing power that we had in say 2020, for example. Clear. Um, because I think you misspoke just then. Mm. When you said prices were coming down, did you mean prices are going up? Sorry, the rate of uh, the, well, which prices are rising are coming down. So, uh, so inflation uh, is coming down. Yeah. Food prices are down. still yes. going up. Yeah, I think yes, our viewers find it. Five, can yes, you just explain this to our... percent and not 5%. So just explain this to our viewers. Uh, you say inflation is coming down, and people say to us, I know, but the prices of goods are going up. So just explain to our viewers how those two things could be true. So real wages are rising and have been rising now for the last eight months. And that's really important because it means more money in your paycheck at the end of the month. And that is looking at uh, wage rises and then taking away the impact of inflation. So that is really important. The prices are going up. Prices are going up. I mean, the, the inflation. I'm glad that somebody is holding them to account. It's just a shame that the person who is holding them to account is somebody who literally used to be the Labour shadow chancellor. I mean, first of all, it's terrible that he has this position that he does anyway, because it's a clear way in which that our media analysis can be skewed. And also it means that when other rightoids will look at this, rather than critiquing the failure of their own side, they'll just go, oh, it's Ed Balls, he's biased because he's from Labour. Like, just have somebody actually impartial and we can't have any, we can avoid all of this nonsense about the bias within the interviewer. But of course, as has been pointed out in chat and by Ed Balls here, like, she is wrong to say that prices are falling. Prices are still going up. Inflation is still at 3.2%. This is above the Bank of England's inflation target. And unless wages properly rise for a long time, people will still be worse off than they were in 2020. And that's a result of the fact that not only have we had three years of an inflationary period, but on top of that, the Conservative Party for 14 years have ensured that wages in real terms have remained incredibly stagnant because of their supply side labour market reforms. As you'll know, the target rate of inflation for the country that the Bank of England sets is 2%. So that is the target, that is what the Bank of England and the government are working towards. Right, so inflation is coming down, but prices are going up. Can I just ask?
I think it's actually what's interesting here is that Ed Balls has framed it too far in the wrong direction. She's explained correctly that, well, actually, you know, the impact of inflation can be lessened by real wage increases, which is true. And he's just tried to revert it to, oh, well, you know, prices going up still. Inflation down, prices up. I mean, good to clarify that. But I think that trying to ignore the fact that real wages can obscure some of those price increases, a little bit disingenuous there from Ed Balls. But uh, again, the long and short of it really and truly is that Laura Trot, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, on TV, live, yet again, deliberately misinformed the public and had to be called out directly to her face by somebody else. Incredible. And again, but we never talk about Laura Trot moments. We only ever talk about Diane Abbott moments. Very, very silly. Either way, that's not the only thing that she's been up to in terms of inflation and in terms of getting the things wrong. Here she is on Sky News last night discussing the fall in inflation with Kay Burley, somebody who actually seems to be the only person who wants to hold the government to account. Let's watch. Inflation is down to 3.2%. Uh, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Laura Trott, is here. It's good to see you. Good morning. It's good news. Yes, it's very good news. And it hasn't happened by accident. When the Prime Minister took over, inflation was at 11%. You know, food inflation was at nearly 20%. That was so difficult for everyone at home. But because of the action we've taken alongside the Bank of England, which has been praised by the IMF, um, and the OBR has been very clear that the actions we've taken in this year in the budget have been deflationary, it's now down. And that's really good news for people at home. I mean, this is all just kind of nonsense, actually. I actually fully disagree, even with the OBR here, to say, oh, well, things have been deflationary, for example, the actions that they've taken. And that's not true. That's just not true during cost-push inflation. I know monetarist groupthink has basically infected all of our financial institutions, right? But it's time we called this shit out. Randomly pulling back spending for no reason, randomly hiking interest rates because you think that there's demand-led inflation when there isn't, does not stop inflation at all. Again, the interest rate increases from the Bank of England take over a year to actually have their effects felt throughout the remainder of the economy. The Bank of England's interest rate rises haven't even taken a full effect yet. They can't be given credit for the drop in inflation, for the level of disinflation that we've seen. Because it's cost push inflation. Input prices went up, the rest of the economy had to raise prices to compensate, and now prices have settled, and that's why inflation is coming down. It's super simple. It's super simple. But when inflation was going up, you said it was nothing to do with you, and now it's coming down. It's everything to do with the Prime Minister. No, I think, well, the way that inflation works, obviously, it was a huge inflationary shock. Fucking Putin's uh, illegal war in Ukraine did have massive pressure on energy prices here in the UK. So you're admitting that it was cost push inflation. You're literally admitting right now that you didn't do anything to make oil prices drop, which is the reason why we have this inflation you're immediately undermining the argument that you just made. And it's very difficult once inflation starts to then bring it down. Um, but we have worked very carefully, very steadily on increasing the supply side of the economy, on making sure that we are being very responsible with public spending. How have you increased the supply side of the economy? What investment? You, investment is still super low in this country. You've done no supply side investment. What are you talking about? I'm working alongside the bank because it's really important those two things work together. So fiscal and monetary policy have to work very closely together. Idiot. I mean, the fact that she can literally undermine her own argument in the very segment where she responds to it just shows you how stupid these people are. And again, how much monetarist group think has infected the, the highest echelons of our financial institutions. Just, just, where, again, where's the supply side investment? It's just not there. And in fact, when somebody suggests supply-side investment, as Labour have done and have now walked back on because Labour, because Tories kept attacking them for it, that would be a way of bringing energy prices down by having green investment, which isn't affected by global energy shocks. But they've done none of these things. What the hell is she talking about? Ridiculous. But of course, she's a posh person who went to a private school, so she'll have none of the same criticism that is given towards left-wing figures when they have screw-ups on TV. I'm sure. I'm sure that will happen, won't it? Hey there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment. That helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for membership to just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron. And there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.